ordinary guys doing extraordinary things. The Trilby Tour is brought to you in association with William Hunt, Savile Row and Calloway. One man's dream for thousands of golfers to share. They said it couldn't be done, but he knew different. A quest to scare the living daylights out of golfers on the first tee. To set daunting challenges. To push players to their very limits. To create golfing memories. The next installment of the Trophy Tour. Coming to a television set near you now. Welcome to the penultimate regional championship from the majestic Oxfordshire. Take it away. Last week's Trilby Odyssey took us to golf at Goodwood where the reigning Trilby Tour international champion Chris Dyson launched a serious challenge for a regional title on his home course. He made the playoff and started odds on favourite for the win but despite some serious putting magic the Trilby Tour championship of Sussex eluded him and all because of one man's determination. Darren Burton or the Margate maestro as he's now affectionately known on the tour turned up to Goodwood with his A-game and a busload of friends and family. The tour had never seen anything like it when the winning putt dropped in overtime and wife Steph assisted by the Margate massive went bonkers for the new Trilby Tour King of Sussex. And on we go, a little hot north this week for the penultimate regional championship, event number nine at the Oxfordshire. Year two as a Trilby venue and once again offering up ten more places at the international final at the Buckinghamshire Golf Club in just a couple of weeks' time. The top four today will as always go into a winner-takes-all playoff battle for the Trilby Tour Championship of Oxfordshire with the prospect of some dramatic golf on this majestic championship course. Coming up on a packed show, shot of the day is up for grabs and these days it seems that if you don't at least hit the stick, you can't even get nominated. Every Trilby Tourian will tell you that top 10 is the goal at the start of the day and we'll bring you up to date with exactly which golfers achieve that goal for a place at the international final. In typical Trilby fashion, this week's four-man three-hole winner takes all dust up, once again delivers some great golf. Stay tuned for full highlights coverage of the playoff for the Trilby Tour Championship of Oxfordshire. And don't worry, we haven't forgotten about it. If you promise to be good boys and girls, we'll drop in on what turned out to be a classic catalogue of gobsmacking golf in this week's Rogues Gallery. Time to get on with the show now, and first up, it's a blast from the past. Last year, Dave Just claimed the Trilby Tour Championship of Oxfordshire, and as with all our tour winners, we caught up with him before he started his title defence to see how this year has gone as a Trilby Tour champion. My experience of the Trilby Tour so far is, has been phenomenal. Um, the first year I played in it, I had a great day, but didn't play too well. And then last year, um, it just was, was something special. The pressure that you feel under in the playoff is unbelievable. Until people have been through that, you can't explain it. The putt sticks in, in my mind, the, that long snaking putt on the last to, to win it. Um, it was just unbelievable, really. I just had no expectations of what it would be like. Fantastic. 
since I've been on the TV, a few people have uh, have come up to me, uh, mainly at golf uh, golf events, and uh, suddenly the, the penny drops, and they, they realise that it was uh, it was from the Trilby Tour. You don't realise how many people watch this this program, uh, and it's becoming a bit of a a bit of a cult with uh, with all golf fans, really. I'm hopeful that I could make the top ten and get through to the final. That's my my objective uh, at the start of play. I don't feel any pressure defending my title at all because I've actually done it. Uh, I think the pressure's on the other people who haven't been there but have tried many times. Uh, a few of my, uh, my friends from Hanbury Manor are out here today, um, played in lots of these events, haven't quite made it, so uh, I wish them all the best and I hope they finish second to me. Like it, Dave, like it. We'll bring you up to date with his round a little later. Time to begin our top ten roundup now. Robert Hampson from the Willingdon Golf Club shut out the rest of the field, claiming that tenth qualification spot with his score of 34 points. In a three-way tie for seventh place, Ricelip Golf Club's very own baron of the bunkers, Jake Mildenhall, was within a whisker of scoring more than 35. Top 10, though, was achieved, and he was off to the big show at the Buckinghamshire. Alongside him, Whiteleaf Golf Club's Marcus Oates made a very tidy job of this daunting 18 holes of championship golf. He clearly had his morning porridge, judging by that drive. And underneath the Trilby, completing the three-way tie for seventh, Dave Just. No title defence for Dave, but a chance to go one better at the Trilby Tour International Final. Once again, courtesy of a belting putt at 18. And for the record, he was the top Hanbury Manor finisher for the second year running. Another year of bragging in the bar for Dave then. Come on, you Hanbury boys, you can't keep letting him have it all his own way. The Oxfordshire has a rich 20-year history of staging big events, a magnificent tour stop for the Trilbytorians for two years in a row now. Here's Director of Sales Ryan Bezadeno to tell us more. I think any sort of event that's uh, exposed, both in the media and obviously televised as well, is important for, for golf courses to, to be able to showcase um, their product and the ability to obviously host uh, major events. And I think it, you know, it does carry some sort of you know, prestige and stature for, for the venues involved, really. The Oxfordshire is, is something special, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's a course with some deep heritage. I mean, obviously, you know, the early years, the, the B&H uh, International. Uh, we had the Ladies Open here before in the Anderson Consulting um, Championship. So they are coming to a course with a pedigree and a challenging course. It used to be one of the longest, I believe, in the country, um, but things change on a regular basis. And also, it's the, I think it's the only um, American Parkland course in the UK and designed by Rhys Jones, who did the uh, recent US Open course. So they come into a course that is both challenging, but has a very good name to it as well. I mean, the clubhouse itself is, is fantastic, you know. And we are planning to build another nine, um, hopefully by the end of this year. It would be another championship nine, designed again by Rhys Jones, and hopefully would be a, a sort of 12-month process to get that, that uh, finished up and built. On top of that, the following year, 2013, will be our 20th anniversary as a venue. All I would say at the moment is watch that space, and. Um, There'll be a few exciting things happening over the years, I think. Thanks, Ryan, and there'll certainly be a few exciting things happening over the coming hours today. Back to the course now, where Graham Gibbons was draining them for fun on his way to establishing another shootout scenario for entry into the exclusive playoff club. 36 points was the mark Graham established, and Crondon Park's Lee Willis was able to match that with some very canny bump and run tactics around the greens. The five handicapper in irresistible form going into the shootout for a place in the top four. Months of painstaking preparation for Paul Llewellyn underline the professional approach to the Trilby Tour that some players are taking these days, and it all paid off as the Drayton Park man made it three into the shootout. And completing a four-way shootout lineup courtesy of this approach at 18 was Sittingbourne Golf Club's Bradley Smith, the man of Kent making the international final and keeping his hopes alive of playoff glory on the day. So, a four-man shootout for what turned out to be two places left in the playoff. The other places claimed by right by two golfers that tied for top spot with the best score of the day. Siren Sester Golf Club's George Peer at just 18 years of age became this season's joint youngest playoff contender alongside Mark Keevil, winner at Travos, his 37 points well earned. And finishing in style to also head straight into the playoff was Mark Turner, the Hartley Whitney Golf Club man sinking this one to rise above it all making sure he enjoyed the moment with an exuberant and very genuine celebration, followed by a reaction we see plenty of on the Trilby Tour. 
Confirmation then of the leaderboard after 18 holes here at the Oxfordshire. Hampson, Just, Mildenhall and Oates definitely could go for that with their qualification to the international final. There was a brief respite for George Peer and Mark Turner to bask in the sun ahead of the playoff pressure. But Graham Gibbons, Lee Willis, Paul Llewellyn and Bradley Smith had to tee it up for a chip off in the shootout. Four men, two places, one shot. It's happened before, it'll happen again. 18 holes of golf in the glare of the Trilby Tour spotlight. A good score, a new reward, yet more pressure. That's how it works, but Graham Gibbons responded magnificently. Beat that, Rory. Paul Llewellyn next to take aim, with one place surely stolen. His shot, though, was judged to perfection. Did anyone say Ian Clark drew its glen? Nearly. They breed them tough down near the Isle of Sheppey and Bradley Smith proved that was the case, but it really was so near yet so far. Cheerio to Bradley. And last chance saloon fell to Lee Willis. Only he could ruin Paul or Graham's day. No bump and run option available this time. So he bit the bullet and went straight at the stick and it just wouldn't bite. Four fantastic shots, but for Liam Bradley, it was a case of well played, you're out. And for Paul and Graham, it was get your caddy, fetch your clubs, and join George Peer and Mark Turner in the playoff, coming right up on Sky Sports after the break. Stay with us. The Trilby Tour is brought to you in association with Callaway. The Trilby Tour is brought to you in association with William Hunt, Savile Row. The Oxfordshire has once again provided a magnificent stage for our Trilby Torians and now just four men remain in the quest for the Trilby Tour Championship of Oxfordshire. Mark Turner, George Peer, Paul Llewellyn and Graham Gibbons line up for the playoff. Let's hear about hole one from the director of golf, Justin Barnes. The playoff holes we've chosen today to use are the first, the eighth and the ninth as we play them. The first hole is a, is a fairly generous opening hole, it's, it's a par four, big bunker down the left hand side. Um, it's got a pretty generous fairway and a, and a big green as well. There's a, a green side bunker on the front right of the green which catches a lot of weak second shots. The green is fairly big but it has some, some fairly big undulations on it so any ball that goes past the flag it will be a pretty tricky putt coming back down the green. The first man to tee it up is the joint youngest playoff contender of the season. Let's hear from the golfer they're calling the baby-faced assassin, George Peer. I'm George Peer, age 18, from Sarcester Golf Club, and cap 8. Currently applied for an apprenticeship as an electrician. My interests outside of golf are football. I support Arsenal Football Club. My sporting hero is Dennis Perkamp. Just love the way he played football. My favourite golfer is uh, currently Charles Swartzel. My strengths on the golf course are putting and driving. I'd say my weaknesses on the course are sand play. My um, thoughts coming off is just my swing really. Just keep doing what I was doing out on the course and I think I should be fine. I'm confident where I played through the whole play. Our short game was good, putting was good. Keep doing what I'm doing, I think I'll win. Hey, we like a bit of pre-playoff confidence. George away and an early indicator of his glasses half empty approach. Good shot, great outcome, not happy. I don't know, teenagers. Next to peg it up and with his teenage years firmly behind him, the man that sunk a cracker at 18 to make it to the top four and he's looking remarkably cool on the tee. My name is Mark Turner, age 41. I play at Hartley Whitney Golf Club, handicap of eight. When I'm not playing golf, I'm a software consultant. Outside of golf, I like most sports, but main interest in my family. My football team is West Ham United. My favourite golfer would be Lee Westwood. My sporting hero would be Seve Ballesteros. Strengths on the course, driving. My weaknesses on the course, definitely the putting. I wouldn't say I'm confident going into the play, I'm quite nervous going into it. It's a new territory for me, first time in the Trilby Tour, so. But we're just going to enjoy it. You heard the man out to enjoy, but he won't like that one. No prizes for guessing where this has gone. Off to the left, and it's ended up perched precariously on the edge of a big bunker, I'm afraid, Mark. 
And next up, a man that looks like he's just left Frank Dean and Sammy behind to walk straight onto this tee. My name is Graham Gibbons, I'm 59. I'm a member of Gordon and Streetly Golf Club, uh, playing off a handicap of five. Interests outside of golf. Um, I've got a house in northern Spain that I spend a lot of time in, um, and that takes up a lot of work. My favourite golfer would have to be Ballesteros. Sporting hero, um, I'd probably say Bobby Charlton. I'm not really a football supporter, but if I were to be one, then I think it would be Tottenham. The strengths on the course, uh, chip reasonably well and have the odd putt. Weaknesses on the course, um, probably the night before. <laughs> the thought of going into the playoff situation is what will be will be. You know, you just got to hit the ball and hope it goes where you want it to go. Graham looking to keep it cool for the next three holes. That's not a good sign. It's gone right and it's somewhere over there. That's about as specific as we can be after that tee shot. And last to the tee, the man they call Paul Llewellyn, because that's his name. Listen. My name's Paul Llewellyn. I play at Drayton Park Golf Club in the Midlands. I'm age 39 and my current handicap is 10. When I'm not playing golf, I've got a landscaping business. Outside of golf, uh, I like running, going to the gym, my kids, uh, spending a bit of quality time with a good lady uh, and practising. Favourite golfer would have to be Tiger. Sporting hero would probably be Kenny Daglish. Football team would be Liverpool, definitely. Strengths on the course when playing well, driving and wedge shots to be quite honest. Weaknesses on the course can be a bit hooky. I'm glad to find out that the three holes that were, were playing in the playoff are holes that I did fairly well on earlier. So uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. It'd be nice to know we're in the top ten. So anything else is a bonus. You'd have to be confident. You've just got to stand on there and hit it. Isn't it great when the boys get all technical? Llewellyn, the only player of the four to receive a shot at this first hole and a bit of anti-hook there from Paul, but it looks OK. Away we go with another Trilby Tour playoff. Matt Woods, welcome back to the Trilby Tour commentary booth once again. Event number nine, can you believe it? Yes, Simon, one more regional to go after this and then the international final at the Buckinghamshire. What a great season it's been. Yeah, I'm not sure Mark Turner quite shares your sentiment at the moment with the lie he's left himself here. He finds himself on the mounds on the right-hand side, ball below his feet, on an upslope, out the semi-rough, 210 yards to go to the front of the green. Other than that, he's flying. Now he's out with his favourite little five wood, ball below the feet should go right, on the upslope should go left. Bit of a hit and hope coming up here I think. It looks like he's turned that over to the left and that's going to leave him a very smelly third shot. So tough start to this Trilby Tour playoff here at the Oxfordshire for Mark Turner and uh, for Gibbons, solid tee shot. Yeah, just in a semi, flatter light. Just under the 200 yards to the front, so he's out with his rescue. Looks to have made good contact, maybe just drifting right. There's a bunker down there waiting. Hasn't quite got it to the trap. That's going to leave him a fairly straightforward third shot. Yeah, came into this playoff very calm, did Graham Gibbons. Whereas this young man, I would say fired up in his interview. Very confident ahead of these three holes. Great swing off the first tee. Just finds the right-hand side of the fairway. Just going to be coming in over that front right bunker. But a good line. Looks to have struck that beautifully. That's a fantastic opening blow. Well, full marks to the 18-year-old. George Peer striding down that fairway. A superb second shot. And he's thrown the gauntlet down to the rest of the field. Understandably seeing the players down the right side, heavily bunkered down that left side. Llewellyn 175 yards into that flag. Needs to make good solid contact. Middle of the green should be his target. Looks to have struck it beautifully. Oh, look <laughs> at that. What a start to this playoff. And Llewellyn produces the goods as well. Brilliant stuff on this first hole. He will enjoy watching that one back. Nearly pitched it straight in the hole. That's left himself about 12 to 15 feet for birdie with a lot of swing off the right-hand side. Well, it's kind of half and half in the end. Graham Gibbons and Mark Turner. Third shot's still off the green. And, oh dear. Well, that's a shame. 
for Graham Gibbons already now under some serious pressure. Looking fairly calm, fairly relaxed. Now Turner's just got a small bunker to fly over. Not much green to work with, but got to get it on the surface. Oops, a daisy. A couple of entries there for Rogue's Gallery at the start of this playoff. And Gibbons now trying to recover the situation. He's very good from this sort of range, and I'm glad to say for Graham's point of view, he's proved it. The thing the players have got to be aware of is Llewellyn gets a shot here, so they don't want to give him too much daylight at the opening hole. And still work to be done there. The save is five. It's tough, isn't it? Mark <laughs> Turner finding out just how tough it is, and he's still got to rake the bunker. And worse to come, he's first to putt as well. Now this will swing off the right hand side. Green's in beautiful shape. Real pacey today. Get in. Get in. Oh. Well that would have sorted things out. Certainly would have uh, kept Mark Turner in the running. From his point of view, this first hole in the Trilby Tour playoff here at the Oxfordshire not going so well. Plus two already then. Peter for birdie. Needs to start this six to eight inches outside that left side. Got to be firm. Back up the slope. Just didn't get that started on line. <coughs> That'll be a solid four. But we'll, again, we'll be very aware that Llewellyn gets a shot here. He says he loves his putting, Matt, but I think that was just a case of being over the putter and suddenly realising where you are, what you're doing. Absolutely. Some sign of early nerves there on the first for Peter, but it's a good par under normal circumstances but Llewellyn's got a putt for birdie net eagle on the first to really create some early daylight gonna swing a lot off the right hand side and just cozy that down to the whole side Matt you were saying you reckon Paul Llewellyn is a pretty astute golfer knows what he's doing out there thinks it all through player that works hard on his game strikes me as the kind of person who's going to stick to his strengths not going to try and overextend himself Gibbons for bogey Gibbons strikes me as a type of golfer who's going to enjoy himself he's just going to enjoy himself at all costs he really is a very natural player and as he said at the top of the uh, playoff if it goes right it goes right if it doesn't fair enough fractionally off the right side this putt Nothing really to worry about. Should be a straightforward four net three. And a wonderful start. That is a cracking start for Paul Llewellyn. Goes to one under. And our leader heads towards the second playoff hole in pretty good shape. The Trilby Tour is brought to you in association with Callaway. The Trilby Tour is brought to you in association with William Hunt, Savaro. Welcome back to the Oxford Chair. The playoff for the Trilby Tour Championship of that region is well underway. Let's hear about the intriguing challenge that awaits the contenders at playoff hole two from director of golf, Justin Barnes. Second playoff hole will catch a lot of people out generally today and in the playoff circumstances it will it will certainly catch people out. It's a short par four but it's certainly a hole where you make more bogeys than you do birdies. It's, um, it's reachable for very big hitters off the tee but it is a carry all over water. Most people will be playing a long iron from the tee and then they'll be playing a short iron into the green. Uh, the second shot again will be over the water so a lot of pressure on, on those people in the playoff today. The greens on the on the stint meter, the greens have been cut and rolled, so they've been prepared, you know, to tournament standard today. So they should be pretty tricky out there for the competitors. Paul Llewellyn making a fantastic start to this Trilby Tour playoff for the Championship of Oxfordshire, and he's done all the right things here. But Matt Woods, this is a, a terrifying tee shot. Yeah, one of many signature holes here at the Oxfordshire tough tee shot, frightening tee shot really, water down the right, bunkers down the left, guys just trying to find a position to give themselves a good angle in for their second shot 
closer you hit it to the water, the shorter the second shot is. Also a little island with a couple of mature trees out there to contend with as well. Just trying to move it up there about 190, 200 yards. To leave himself about 150 yards in. And a wonderful start. Well, we said it on the first playoff hole, but Paul Llewellyn is clearly thinking very hard about how he's going to approach this playoff. Now, for George Pearce, slightly different approach. Going to try and get this as far down as he can. Yeah, this brings those bunkers on the left-hand side into play. Choosing the iron takes them out of play. And I think that's a little bit left. That's a steer away from the water. And that's going to leave him a very difficult second shot. Yeah, news is that Peer is not in the sand, but he's got himself a nasty light. More on that later. Not a great start, I'm afraid, for Graham Gibbons to this playoff, but he's such a relaxed character. Flirting with the water there, but still found it quite amusing. Mark Turner out with the little rescue club. Just his little fairway finder. Super shot there, straight down the middle. Just to confirm that everybody except Graham Gibbons gets a stroke at this second playoff hole, but uh, it's Paul Llewellyn still sitting pretty. Graham's second shot, can't see too much of the target from this position on the fairway. Now Graham Gibbons, who flirted with the water with his tee shot, has jumped into a full-blown affair with his second. I'm fearing a bit of a tin cup moment. That was just a quick check with the caddy. How many balls have we got in the bag? A much better strike this time. That should safely find the middle of the green. Now once the players have safely found the fairway, the green becomes a real challenge. Massive slope from back to front. You really want to hit it in the middle of the green, but that leaves you the trickiest putt. Llewellyn in position A1. Should be aiming at that middle of the green. Just try and hit this three or four yards past the flag. Oh, he's taken it on. That is phenomenal from Paul Llewellyn. And with that single shot, he's just put everybody else right back in the dark. Now Turner also receives a shot here. But must get this inside Llewellyn's ball if he's going to have any chance of winning this playoff. And under normal circumstances, that would be a great shot. Well, Matt, Paul Llewellyn has just ripped this playoff to pieces. Absolutely. Now, that makes this shot even more difficult. Normally, you just chip this out, but he's got to go for it now. The difficulty here is getting the flight correct, getting it up in the air enough to get it on the green. But it's taken the ground before the ball. That was always the danger. And fortunately for him, it doesn't have enough energy to get into the water. So young George Peer still with a shot at the flag. But all the time this is going on, Paul Llewellyn is sitting just a few yards from the pin. Happy as you like. Yeah, needs to use the slope behind the flag. Chuck this in three or four feet behind the flag. Really get it to spin back. That's what he's tried to do. And just flown it a yard too far. Well, if you remember last year, Omar Butt in this playoff holed out from right on the edge of the green and somebody is going to have to do that if they're going to mount any sort of challenge on Llewellyn. The toughest part about this putt is starting the ball far enough right to allow it to swing back to the left. Once you've safely negotiated that, you've got to get the pace right as well. Great pace. Oh, had a good chance. That was a bold effort. Wonderful putt there. No choice but to go for it. Turner will have learnt plenty from that putt. So Pierre has had a dart at it. No joy. Turner's opportunity now. Watch this pick up pace. It works down that hill. It's all the marker of Piers there. That's, even that's run out three or four feet. Turner's ball's run out comfortably five or six. Gibbons making up the numbers now. Still enjoying his day out. Still enjoying his 15 minutes of fame. 
certainly will have the international final to enjoy as well. Mustn't forget these guys have all qualified. Yeah, absolutely, that would have been goal one today. Get yourself in that top ten, get yourself to the international final. Evidence of how much swing and slopes on this green. Right, it's a real challenge once you've successfully found the fairway and found the green. Now, Llewellyn holds this. He goes to three under through two. I've got two words for you. Paul Collins. Yeah, I've got some more words for you. Lowest ever Trilby Tour playoff score at four under. And Llewellyn, well on his way. Uphill putt can be firm. This to go to three under. Come loves on. it. Oh, loves it. Yes. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Well, it was all about the second shot, really, to set up the chance. But he's gone and consolidated here. And that puts him in a commanding lead. Worst case scenario is he takes a three-shot lead to the last hole. Fantastic golf. And look at him in the background there, calm as you like. Yeah, three under with one to play. I think I'd feel pretty good as Mike Turner strokes that one in. And rather like Collins did at Rockcliffe Hall, Llewellyn is making the other three players' golf look pretty ordinary, but they're playing well. Yeah, some good golf here. I'd just like to take you back to your point about you'd feel pretty safe. I've seen you swing it. No chance. <laughs> Pierre then, to stay in some sort of contention, gets a shot, remember. If this is a bogey putt, it'll be a net par. We'll keep him at level. Confidently drilled in the back of the hole. But as you said, Matt, worst case scenario, Llewellyn at three up. And I guess the only problem here for Llewellyn is he mustn't start to think, yes, I've done it. Gibbons then, double bogey, no shot. And I'm afraid it's just gone from bad to worse. Can you believe this? He will go to the last playoff tee, Graham Gibbons, seven shots off the pace. And that's a real testament to the quality of Llewellyn's golf. And the second shot there into that hole was just out of the top draw. So Paul Llewellyn brilliantly moving to three under and looking to make history. The final hole in the playoff for the Trilby Tour Championship of Oxfordshire coming right up after the break. The Trilby Tour is brought to you in association with Callaway. The Trilby Tour is brought to you in association with William Hunt, Savile Row. Welcome back to the Oxford Cheer. Just one hole stands between Paul Llewellyn and a Trilby Tour title. So here's Director of Golf, Justin Barnes, to tell us what Paul can expect at the final playoff hole. Third playoff hole today is the ninth hole here at the Oxford Cheer. It's one of our most challenging par fours. It's, it's a long par four with bunkers all down the left-hand side off the tee. But avoiding those bunkers by playing down the right-hand side, you make the hole quite a bit longer so you'll be faced with a very long second shot into the green. You see a lot of second shots misjudged, people coming up short of the green, which to be honest is probably the best place to miss this green if you go past this flag and you'll be putting back down the green and it'll be very quick. The pin today is at the front of the green so it's probably, like I say, a good miss to miss this green just short today. Final playoff hole and Matt Woods, this man Paul Llewellyn has a date with destiny. Absolutely, this is an exhibition on how to win. Ninth hole here at the Oxfordshire. Good, strong par four up the hill. Real grandstand finish. Great amphitheatre around the green. A couple of pot bunkers up the right-hand side that players should be aiming towards. Shouldn't be able to get there today. Well, first problem safely negotiated. Now Mark Turner at one over has played some good golf, the eight handicapper, but finds himself at the moment four shots off the pace. Yeah, all four players receive a shot up this final hole. Needs to make no worse than four, and then needs a lot of help. But that's not an ideal start in that left-hand bunker. We've seen that expression before from Mark Turner. A sigh of exasperation. I think he's accepted his fate. George Peer won't have, though. He is still technically in contention. Decent drive here, then another one of those sparkling approaches, and Llewellyn might just feel the pinch. Yeah, pin tucked away in the back left-hand corner today. It's going to be difficult for the players to get back there with their second shots. But this young man was brimming with confidence on the first tee. Got to make sure he maintains that up this last hole. And, next on the tee, and that's Graham a stunning Gibbons. way to start. So another lovely strike from Pierre. And from Graham Gibbons. 
the score of plus four, I'm afraid, doesn't tell you what a good goal for this man is. He just hasn't managed to produce it in the playoff. Uh, go away from today. He's got a few weeks to prepare. Says he likes to prepare for tournaments. I'm sure he's got a lot of fun planned. And all the preparation that Paul Llewellyn has put in for this event is paying off big time as he marches towards this final green. Now Gibbons with an opportunity to show us what a great golfer he is. He's brought his A game out first two holes. Tough shot this, pin back left, needs to just turn it in a little from right to left. Struck it beautifully, it's on a good line. Oh, hello. Oh. oh. Doesn't quite feed back. A little bit of protection at the back of the green for the golfers, which will encourage them to go for it. But here we go. This is the championship shot for Paul Llewellyn. He yeah, got himself about 160 yards to the front, pinning that back corner. Probably playing about 180 yards uphill. Really key here is just to get a good strike on the ball. He should be looking middle of the green, some 20 feet right of the flag. I think he likes it. Oh, he should love it. And Matt, he's reached all three greens in regulation. Yeah, that's a fantastic display of golf. And it's not like they've put him on the three easiest holes either. Now Turner, just going to advance this up the fairway, looking to be aiming up the right-hand side. Just trying to leave himself about 100 yards into that back left flag. Second visit to the sand today. And that's ideal. Nothing more he could do than that. Got the caddy doing a bit of overtime there. Now to have any chance of putting pressure on Llewellyn. Pierre needs to get this up in that back left corner. Get it with inside 20 feet. Give himself a chance for a birdie net eagle. Llewellyn's still got plenty of work to do with that putt. Good looking swings, tried to move that one in right to left. It's on a good line. Oh, oh yes. yes. Superb golf shot there, beautiful golf shot. Well, we were in unison there, Matt, and both in full agreement. That was a fantastic shot, and for George Pierre, maybe there's a glimmer of hope? Absolutely, it's not over till it's over. Llewellyn's still got plenty of work to do. His putt's up quite a steep slope with a lot of swing off the right-hand side. This should feed back. And there you go, lovely sight. All four balls in play. Gallery moving up the fairway. But at the moment, nobody can touch Paul Llewellyn. Fantastic display from him out on this course. Got the old Sir Alex chewing gum going on there. And maybe that's been part of what's kept him seemingly so cool. And he could finish it all right here. This putt for the Trilby Tour Championship of Oxfordshire with a massive score of five under. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Llewellyn. Pace, the all-important key. He's got to move it up that tier. Quite a severe slope in the middle and it will move from right to left. Well, we teed it up, didn't we? But uh, I'm afraid it didn't quite happen for Paul Llewellyn but he's still in complete control here. Now Gibbons to finish in style after that stunning second shot. Nearly hold it. Super fast putt this. Well, good effort from Graham Gibbons, but it's into the black and white. And it's adios and back to his house in northern Spain to prepare for the international final. Turner with some 20 feet for par. Be a great way to sign off. This is going to swing off the right hand side. Should be looking about two feet right of the hole as his start point. Just needs to make sure he strikes it on the right line. Looks to be a bit weak to me. And he knows it. Mark Turner under hits the putt and bows out of this Trilby Tour Championship of Oxfordshire. But really, not his fault at all. Played some steady golf, but nobody's been able to live with Paul Llewellyn. Now, George Pier, a birdie putt. This will be a net eagle. This will get him to two under. This will just give our leader something to think about. A little break off the left. Needs to be firm. Can't see him leaving this short. No. Oh, no. Well, that was the putt, Matt, that he really could have gone for. Nothing to lose. There's no second place on the Trilby Tour. 
I don't think he'll live to regret it. I can't see uh, Llewellyn three putting from where he is, but you never know. So into the black and white for young George Pierre. He heads to the international final. Clearly a young man with a very good game. So keep an eye on him at the Buckinghamshire Golf Club. But our attentions now turn to the man of the moment, the only man in the red. He's destroyed the rest of this field. And this to equal Paul Collins' winning total of four under and to claim the title. Yeah, and a man who definitely goes on my list of favourites to watch at the Buckinghamshire. Just off the right edge. Simple little putt, really. Oh, well, he's making us wait. And I'm afraid he's just gone up to 40 CPMs. That's a choose per minute after that miss. How much is George regretting leaving that putt short? And this is comfortably three feet and a little bit of left to right break. Not one the right-handed golfer enjoys. Nothing comes easy on the Trilby Tour. And despite how well Paul has played, this will feel very tough right now. This for the Trilby Tour Championship of Oxfordshire. All hail the new boss. It's not the playoff record, but it's every bit as emphatic as Paul Collins' win at Rockcliffe Hall. Congratulations to Paul Llewellyn. He's done it. He's the new Trilby Tour champion of Oxfordshire. It's all building nicely to the big finish. We now have nine out of ten regional champions crowned for 2011. Next time, the tour heads from the Oxfordshire to Marriott's Browston Manor and the last chance to claim a place at the international final with the championship of Norfolk and East Anglia also on the line. And this is where all roads lead, the big showdown at the Buckinghamshire Golf Club. Two weeks of drama left. Monday evenings, 10pm Sky Sports. It's Trilby time, so fill your boots. Here's this week's winner, Paul Llewellyn with Clayton Luke. A very cool performance from you, wasn't it, in that playoff? That was no emotion. It was just all out. I'm focused. I'm going to win. Yeah, it was. Um, I have to admit, it wasn't like that inside. It may have appeared like that outside, but inside I was all over the place, to be honest. You know, Dave kept me calm, to be honest, all the way through. So, yeah, very pleased. Very, 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 very pleased. You had uh, Birdie Eagle. I mean, tell us about that. Well, we, we played that hole about an hour before, um, and I went through the back of the green. And Dave said, well, what are you going to hear? I said, it's going to be one less than what we, what we had originally thought. So, and we said we wanted to be below the pin. So we got a bit lucky. We got a bit lucky. I'm absolutely over the moon. For the last two, three months, I've been practice, practice, practice in the gym. I, you know, I've got so many people to thank. Um, it's been an absolutely fantastic experience. The whole day from the start, the build-up, everything, the organisation has been absolutely amazing. Hang on, hold on to your horses, that cup of tea can wait. We've still got some more amazing stuff from the Oxfordshire to show you. First up, some genius with the wedge from James Tomlinson. Get in indeed. Well done James, you produce this week's shot of the day. And from the other end of the golfing space-time continuum, a veritable smorgasbord of on-course tragedy in this week's unforgettable rogues gallery. There is such a thin line between a great shot and a great big steaming pile of rocks. What did you think I was going to say? Now, Matt Woods always says if you miss the putt, watch what your ball does after the hole, as opposed to wave your arms around and talk the hind leg off a donkey about how you could have been a contender. I tell you, Matt knows best. Now, how's this for fooling the camera and your playing partner? But you can't fool us. Now, on this next shot, someone must have moved at the back of the 18th. That is surely the only explanation for that miss. Credit where credit's due, this is tidy golf. Gets some sand on his ball, but washes it off. All in one clever shot. More long distance magic now from our very own Trilby Tour, Lawrence of Arabia. There is a plus to this shocker. Missed the lake. And missed the ball. Well, nearly. Now, this shot is funny enough, but just watch his playing partner acting as the Trilby Tour's fourth emergency service. Oh, oh, hang on. No, hang on. Hang on. Oh, it's all right, John. You're in the water. OK, gents, just going to finish up like the pros on TV. Uh, the skint ones, obviously. Oh, don't hit one of the little birdies. 
Ah, oh, well done. What a nice man. You know the MO, best till last. How's this rip snorter from last year's winner at the park, Gary Barton? Just minus the rip and the snort, Gary. Well, I'm sure we'll get a grin. Hey, there it is, and here's William. Paul attacked everything, and he very much looked like a golf machine. It was incredible, the, the, the sort of strength that he showed on that. But, uh, an impre I mean, his, his play was super, it was rock solid. Very impressive, an impressive guy, having spoken to him. And uh, I like it when it really means something to him, and, and that, you could tell, meant something to him, because I don't think he believes he's won. It's our second time at the Oxfordshire today, and, it, and it's, it's been brilliant. You know, it was great last year, but you get the sort of the same as last year, the excitement, but with a bit, it's a little bit easier to run today. So the day's gone superbly well. The guys at the Oxfordshire have been fantastic. Just a brilliant, brilliant day at a brilliant, brilliant golf club. Next week, we're off to Sprouston Manor. Keith Grant, the head pro there, does everything he can to roll out the red carpet for us, and I'm really looking forward to it. You're not the only one, William. The enigmatic entertainer himself, James Vos, will be back to defend his title at Sprouston Manor, the last chance saloon for a place at the 2011 Trilby Tour International Final. For more information, go to www.williamhunttrilbytour.com. We'll see you next week. Ordinary guys doing extraordinary things. The Trilby Tour is brought to you in association with William Hunt, Savile Row and Callaway.